Hey guys, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to another cozy journaling video. Today's video is going to be an exciting one because it is our 2024 planner lineup video, which uh, is always one of the most exciting videos of the year. So today I'm going to be taking you through my analog system for 2024 and the plans that I have for the different planners and journals that I'll be keeping in the new year. If you haven't seen my last video, I do have a video going over kind of the reflection and review process that I did for 2023 that led me to this system. So if you're on a little video, video binge on YouTube for 2024 planner videos, I'd recommend watching that one first and then coming here so you can get the full backstory for how I got to this system. But with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the planners. For next year, my plan is to use three uh, different journals slash planners. Uh, not all of them are planners. One is a planner and then two are journals, but I'll go over the planner first since I don't think you've seen this one. This is my current planner. I don't think I've shown this to you yet, but this is something that I started in November of this year or maybe December actually, yeah, December. This is a Hobonichi memo book in A6 size, which I just cut down in height so that it would be a little closer to passport size. It's a little wider than passport, but I didn't wanna also cut down the side because as you can kind of see here, the cut isn't perfectly straight. So I thought it would be a little hard to cut the side and get that close to being straight as well since the first cut wasn't even that straight, but this book uh, has essentially been my trial book over the past month for passport bullet journaling. And I'll give you a bit of a flip through, but uh, this is the formal announcement that <laughs> I am back to bullet journaling. I stopped in July of this year after bullet journaling for eight years, which was kind of a big deal to me. And, uh, now in December of 2023, I have come back to it, which is really, really exciting. It's kind of like coming home if I'm gonna be like super dramatic about it. But yeah, I, I am using a passport bullet journal and this memo book was kind of my way of trialing out the size. So I'll just kind of open it up and show you what it looks like. And then I'll talk about my plans for 2024 because I don't have all the supplies to get this set up yet, so I'll kind of mention it and then I'll probably share a formal setup video in the new year. So when I set up this trial bullet journal, I actually took a very, I would say, similar approach to the original bullet journal method, very similar spreads to the kind of setup that Ryder Carroll originally created with a couple modifications, but the one thing that I did do for this was only really use pen with the occasional pencil underline just to kind of make my title stand out. Besides that, this is not a decorative journal. That is not what I want this to be. This is very much just a place where I can plan things, uh, get things recorded so I don't forget them and get things done. So the first page that I have here is the index and you'll probably start to notice that a couple things are blurred out. And that's because for this planner, I'm not using code names like I used to for my work tasks. It just got really hard to uh, keep track of. And I think that's part of why I had some struggles with some other planners in the past. So going forward, I'm just gonna blur my project names and information for privacy that relate to work. And uh, I hope you guys are okay with that, but that's kind of what I'll be doing for those. But I just have an index here. And then because this was only for the end of the year, uh, I set up a future log just for November through December, and then a section for next year, very similar to the bullet journal method. But what I did was uh, instead of doing kind of six months on both pages, I did three months on one side and then on the other side, I made a section for projects so I could write down different projects that I wanna do that relate to the three months on the left-hand page. 
and then I set up a bunch of collections that I wanted to create that I knew I really liked. So things like my restaurant and food log, so places I've eaten, my book log, so things I've read this year. And I did backfill this. This is all the books I read this year, not in like the last two months. That would be <laughs> actually wild. My game log, as well as my film log. And for my game log, I put a star beside games that I replayed or like wasn't playing for the first time. And then I just went directly into my monthly log. So very similar to the bullet journal method, did a vertical calendar on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I have my to-do list, which I did with an Alistair method. So if you're not familiar with the Alistair method, I'll include a link to the blog post that goes over it. But essentially you have one, one column per, it can be day or week, whatever you want per category. And then you can schedule your tasks accordingly. So for me, I have one column per week. I have a fifth column for non-date specific tasks. And then that allows me to plot and organize my to-dos a little better. So this is kind of the plan that I have every month. And then I just went ahead and set up my weeklies. So this weekly is kind of inspired by Lindsay Scribbles. It's a bit of a simplified version of her weekly spread. And uh, what I have here is the week name at the top. I have the habits that I wanna track, and then I have a space, and then I have the actual tasks that I have for the week. And this is also a Alistair method list. So I have Monday through weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday share a day, and then I have a column for non-date specific tasks again. And then on the right side, I just have my daily logs. So very similar to the bullet journal method, just listing out each day in rapid log form and then starting the next one directly after. And I do have a book dart here just to note down the current day that I'm on. So that is a quick flip through of the Passport bullet journal that I've been using. It's been working really, really well. I love how simple it is. It just is a great place for me to write things down. It's nothing fancy. It's just like a workspace. So if my handwriting is weird one day, it's it doesn't matter. I just getting it down is the important part. Visuals is not important and it, it really, it really shouldn't be. But I've been using this as a bullet journal. It's been going great. And my plan for 2024 is to continue that in a passport traveler's notebook. So I'm going to be doing a similar system to Lindsay where I'm going to have an annual book for kind of the collections I showed you at the beginning. And then I will have another quarterly book, which will be for the monthly log, daily logs of that quarter, as well as any notes. And my plan is I'll write notes in there. And then as I finish the month, if there's a note that I actually need to reference past the quarter, I can migrate that into the annual book so that I can have that all in one place and it's a little easier to reference that information. So I don't have the actual supplies for the setup yet, but I think that gives you a good overview of what I plan to do. I am gonna be using the Good Impressions to My River Paper uh, notebooks in white. So those will be coming and those will be the notebooks that I will be setting up this system with. And I will also be purchasing another traveler's notebook for this system. I haven't got it yet, but I will let you know when I do. I'm kind of leaning towards either the Passport Olive or I don't know, maybe the Traveler's Train, but it's kind of hard to find, so <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, I guess this is a good time to say that officially, uh, back in bullet journaling and officially, uh, my planner lineup for next year is all going to be traveler's notebooks. So I will be using three traveler's notebooks. One for my bullet journal, one for my daily journal, and then another one for my, I don't really have a good name for it, but I've been calling it my overflow journal. So yeah, it's a TN kind of year for me. So I've gone over the passport bullet journal why don't I now go over these two books and I'll kind of take you through the rest of my system. 
So these haven't changed too much if you're familiar with my previous videos going over them, but I will share them briefly now in case you haven't seen them. So starting with my daily journal, this is a Passport TN Traveler's Notebook in the camel color. And in it, I have a clear zip folder. I think that's what this is called. I have a wallet. This is the To and Fro Traveler's Company collaboration. And then I have a grid notebook by Traveler's Company. And in here, pretty much what I do is I journal about my day. So every day I have a page and I don't fill out every single day. I will skip some days, which you'll see right off the bat. I skip October 22nd. But on days where something happens that's interesting and I want to journal about it, I will write about it in this book. Which you can see looks like this. I put tabs on the side so that I can see where the different months start. And the other thing I do is I don't put in any of the ephemera from my journaling until after the insert is complete, just so that it's really easy to write in the notebook while I'm using it. So what I actually do is I keep uh, this notebook, which is a collaboration between Starbucks and Traveler's Company. So I kind of keep this outside of my notebook. And what I do with this is I keep the different photos, tickets, and ephemera that I collect that I intend to put in this notebook which uh, looks like this. So this allows me to keep the stuff that I wanna remember to put in this guy once I'm done filling him out. But it also allows me to make sure that the actual uh, writing experience isn't like super lumpy and bumpy. And uh, what I'll be doing with these is once I've finished an insert, I'm gonna be putting it in this uh, traveler's notebook refill binder and uh, storing all my inserts this way. And uh, similarly to this one, I'm gonna be taking a, oh my gosh, the tabs. Something I learned this year is uh, <laughs> maybe to add the tabs like after, after I finish the insert because they tend to get stuck in the string as you go a couple months in, but that's okay. Um, but for this notebook, taking a similar approach, this notebook is also a camel traveler's notebook. I've had this guy a little longer, so you can see the patina quite well, especially uh, this area where I hold it a lot more. I use a Superior Labor X Baumkuchen collaboration folder in this notebook. And then I also use another grid insert. And this one is just more a space for free flow journaling. So if I wanna write more about something that happened or more details about a day, I will put it in here. It's kind of like a commonplace book, but also like a memory keeper as well, like a proper journal. And uh, yeah, I don't really have like a proper definition for it, but it makes sense in my mind. So <laughs> there you go. And uh, similarly to this notebook, as I finish these books, I'll also be taking them out and putting them in archive binders as well by Traveler's Company. And this kind of goes well into the intentions that I set for next year. So one of my big intentions next year is to use a system that's really flexible and doesn't take up a lot of space in my home. So. The great thing about these little archive binders is they can fit five inserts uh, using these little metal bars, which you can't really see here, but you can store these quite comfortably. And I don't think I would use more than five inserts a year, which I think makes this a very nice compact uh, thing to store. It also is great because it helps solve my problem of <laughs> wanting to put in ephemera, but then struggling with the writing experience of the notebook when it gets too bulky. So my strategy of writing and then adding ephemera after as I complete the book has really helped solve that for me. 
and the last thing uh, next year is I feel like I notebook hopped a lot so I really want to try to stay in the same system for next year and as I maybe want to change things up or get bored instead of changing into a new notebook just kind of making changes through the actual cover or kind of insides itself so keeping with the same notebooks but then maybe if I want to change up the charms on my notebook or change up the cover I can do that. I definitely want to be intentional with those things but I thought that could be a nice way to keep things fresh and interesting without actually hopping from book to book which for me just really makes it hard to look back on when the year is done so yeah I'm thinking this will allow me to have a bit more of a consistent archive while still providing me with a flexible enough system that can handle when I want to change things up and not use the same thing uh, and do that in a way as well that is very space conscious. So yeah, that is my plan for 2024. The year of the TN is what I'm calling it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens, but I feel pretty good about this system. It feels good. I'm excited to set up my passport traveler's notebook. I will let you know when I do that and make a separate video, but I hope you enjoyed at least seeing kind of how it's been going. I hope that gave you an idea of what I plan to do. And uh, yeah, let me know what you're gonna be using next year. Are you gonna be in traveler's notebooks? I know a lot of people are using rings now. Let me know below, I'd love to hear. And uh, besides that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.